coming up. Well, here we go again. Another day, another NDP liberal financial scandal. Is the Trudeau government guilty of perform, per, performative reconciliation? I'm... I, um, I guess what I'm alluding to as well is that there's some broad claims uh, being made in some of the, the preambles to the questions being asked by some of my committee members. And, and I'm just wondering if, if they know something more than, than we know. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Welcome to meeting number 146, the House of Common Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimates. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Paquette. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are gathered today on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. My name is Joelle Paquette, and I am the Acting Associate Assistant Deputy Minister of the Procurement Branch. Well, here we go again. Another day, another NDP liberal financial scandal, this time a contracting fried supply chain. What is the total value of misappropriated funds under the Indigenous procurement system? Uh, I do not uh, have that information, and you would have to actually uh, um, refer to Indigenous Services Canada. We are working on the 5% related to PSPC's targets. The Assembly of First Nations testified that there are a number of shell companies securing government contracts in the Indigenous Procurement Program. How many shell companies has the government detected and identified? Again, I think you would have to direct that question to Indigenous Services Canada, who are responsible for the IBD. To your knowledge, is ISC actually looking into the number of shell companies? Uh, I am not familiar with their um, activities, sorry. To your knowledge, has ISC or anyone at PSPC made any referrals to the RCMP? Uh, I am not aware. How many cases has PSPC identified in which a company hires an Indigenous person simply to gain access to federal contracts through the Indigenous Procurement Program? Again, that is a program that is uh, held by the Indigenous Services um, Canada, and they would be the ones um, identifying, not PSPC. Chair, I'm ceding the rest of my time to Mr. Genuis. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Chair. The, the AFN has said, as my colleague mentioned, that most of the companies receiving Indigenous set-asides are actually shell companies. That's according to the AFN. Do you agree with their findings? I would not be able to provide that information, or will I yeah, but not? You're, but you're, sorry, sorry to jump in. You're, you're the procurement department, though. Uh, you're uh, responsible for overseeing government procurement. This is a very serious allegation from one of the leading Indigenous organizations in the country. Do you have an opinion on it at all? I do not have an opinion, and I would refer the, you to uh, request that question to the Indigenous Services uh, Canada. Okay, that's that's that, that's very striking. Most of the companies uh, are shell companies, according to this program, and you're responsible for procurement, and you don't have an opinion either way. Uh, the government uses its own deeply flawed Indigenous business list rather than relying on criteria and lists developed by Indigenous organizations. Why is that? That is the rules that we are uh, bound by, and those rules are set by Indigenous Services Canada as well as the Treasury Board Secretariat of Canada. But, but why, why is it that, um, why is it that, that, that you develop your own list instead of working with Indigenous organizations and relying on lists that they develop? Is there a policy rationale that you're aware of? I am not aware of that. That is a responsibility of the Indigenous Services Canada. And we are bound by those rules, and we are working on how we can actually increase okay. Indigenous... So do they, can I just clarify then? They make all the rules, and you make none of the rules with respect to how you define what is an Indigenous company or what is or is not a shell company? Do You, have, you, you don't have any role whatsoever, you're saying? Uh, no, we do not. That is the Indigenous Services Canada's responsibility to develop those definitions. How come you're responsible for procurement for everything except Indigenous procurement then? We are responsible for procuring 
in trying to increase the Indigenous uh, participation in procurement, but the rules related to the IBD are not ours, and the rules okay, but, but, to but, the but PCIB fraud, is fraud not ours. Fraud prevention in a general sense. Is, is fraud prevention part of your role? Not in the uh, Indigenous uh, Services Canada IBD. They are the ones okay. that are doing the audits and it's the validation just, it's just of those companies. It's to me, then, that you are the procurement department Presumably, you're supposed to have some expertise on this area, and yet you're taking none of the responsibility in the particular case of Indigenous procurement. Um, I want to ask as well, uh, the way to prevent shell companies from giving uh, all of the work to non-Indigenous companies is to have subcontracting requirements. And that's why the rules require that a certain proportion of subcontracts under the Indigenous set-aside go to Indigenous companies. Are these subcontracting rules enforced? The subcon so there are various ways for us to actually uh, increase Indigenous participation in our contracts. One of them is for um, the prime contractor. Sorry, very, very, very limited time. Can you answer the specific question? The one third subcontract rule is it enforced? But I, in in what context do you want that? Like if if there is an, when indigenous, an indigenous requirement. Company- Rece- Ma'am, it's very simple. When an Indigenous company receives a contract uh, under a set-aside, they are required to have one-third of their subcontracts be Indigenous companies. Uh, it appears that there is no tracking of this. Very simple question. Is this one-third subcontract rule enforced? Yes or no? That would be enforced by Indigenous Services Canada. Is it being enforced right now? Or, or you don't know? They would be the ones that would be able to answer that question. Ma'am, it either is being enforced, it isn't being enforced, or you don't know if it's being enforced. That's my question. Which is you would have to know? refer to Indigenous Services Canada to obtain a response M- to that M- question, M- Mr. Chair. I believe that's my time, but can you put the question to the witness and insist that she provides a response? If she doesn't know, she doesn't know, but she should tell us she doesn't know. Is 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 the contract is, is the requirement being enforced? I think I've asked the question four or five times now, and the witness has an obligation to answer it. Ms. Picat. The it would be the responsibility of Indigenous Services Canada to actually enforce that, and they're doing the audits and validation of this happening, and that's that's what I know. I don't know whether or not they are doing it, but I would say that they that's their responsibility, and therefore they're doing it. Maybe I can ask. Okay, so, so she maybe doesn't I'm, know if it's being enforced. Yeah. Does PSPC? Maybe I can just ask on for Mr. Genoas. Does PSPC not have an oversight responsibility? For that, considering it's purchasing, not in the indigenous, not in the indigenous services. uh, Like for the IBD list, we're not the ones responsible for validating or auditing that list. The list, or for purchases, for the directory. So we're responsible for procuring. We're not responsible for the directory, but we need to actually validate the. Um, no, I apologize. I just want to make sure you, you were we were getting the right question to you. I think we'll move on to Miss Atwin now. Yeah, sorry, Chair. Just 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 a point of order, though. Like like. There, sorry, Miss Atwin. Just in. just one second. Did that not answer the question uh, as put forward, Mister Genoas? I, I understand that. They don't maintain the list, but it's a question of whether a rule around subcontracting is enforced. Uh, that That is a responsibility that should f- uh, follow the procurement department, and the witness is saying she doesn't know, uh, which is... Which is so I, I guess the question bizarre. is, is the, the rule around, is the rules being enforced around subcontracting, not the list, but are the actual contracting rules being followed for sub- subcontracting? So... Indigenous Services Canada are responsible for the PSIM. They are responsible for the definition. So the companies that they have in their directory would actually follow that. The subcontractor or the, the 33% is still under their uh, purview to investigate. So they are following the rules or not, is Indigenous Services and PSBC would not be aware. Correct. Ms. Paquette, in May of 2022, Indigenous Services Canada introduced a requirement for businesses to certify that they qualify as Indigenous businesses in order to register on the Indigenous Businesses Directory. Was PSPC consulted on this? And can you explain these requirements? Uh, I do not know if we were consulted. We we may have been, but I, I do not have that answer. Sorry. Okay. 
Uh, and do you know roughly how many businesses there are on the Indigenous Business Directory compared to how many total Indigenous businesses there are in Canada? I do not know. Do you know? Um, yeah, my, my understanding is that there's, um, there's about um, 2,900 uh, businesses on the IBD. Um, based on um, recent um, research, there are upwards of 60,000 um, Indigenous businesses across the country. Um, but that's sort of the information that we have to work with at this moment. Do you think that that massive discrepancy prohibits departments from reaching that 5% target? Uh, the, it, that's why we're trying to engage the uh, Indigenous communities to try to actually get them to register on um, the uh, Indigenous um, in, in the IBD as well as register into Canada buys so that they can actually um, uh, increase their participation in our procurement activities. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and uh, thanks to our witnesses for their patience with our technical challenges. Um, I think this may have been covered in the uh, opening introduction, but uh, listening to the responses, uh, our witnesses have deferred many of the questions to Indigenous Services Canada. And so I wonder if you could uh, very briefly sum up uh, PSPC's role with regard to Indigenous procurement, separate from the role of Indigenous Services Canada. So our role is to actually meet the 5%, uh, so trying to um, uh, incorporate certain measures within our contracts or to um, encourage in our contracts the participation of Indigenous businesses in uh, participating in bidding in our contracts because we need to meet the 5% target and we're doing a lot of engagement to do that. We will... Uh, um, you know, have discussions with our clients, either client departments or within PSPC, on how they could incorporate Indigenous businesses in what they are requiring, either directly or as a subcontractor to the prime uh, by developing some plans. And so that's really our role is to actually develop tools, develop clauses that will encourage uh, Indigenous businesses to participate in our contracts. And then we help our client departments, which is not always PSPC, we help uh, other, um, other uh, departments uh, as a common service provider, and we will encourage them as well to incorporate Indigenous um, participation in their particular requirements and in their contracts. So if I understand the division of labor correctly, uh, Indigenous Services Canada is responsible entirely for the determination of what constitutes an Indigenous business, the criteria, and the registration of those businesses in the directory. And PSPC is, uh, takes that as, as accurate and tries to ensure that as many contracts as possible go to businesses that are uh, so registered in order to meet the 5% target. Now, this study, this committee study, has um, has pointed to really serious and troubling um, discrepancies and uh, situations uh, that question the integrity of that process. Has PSPC ever raised concerns about um, ISC's uh, certification process and the directory and uh, the possibility of, of fraud or misrepresentation in that list of Indigenous businesses? We have, uh, we are supportive of uh, Indigenous Services Canada and we are, they are setting the rules of definitions by which we need to, um, that we need to follow and therefore we, we would have uh, discussions on how best we would be able to, um, you know, incorporate more Indigenous business in our procurement. And uh, through uh, PAC, we also make sure that there's good communication with Indigenous uh, businesses or Indigenous representation. And um, they uh, then have those discussions directly with uh, Indigenous Services Canada. But my understanding is that P one of PSPC's roles is to ensure the overall integrity of government procurement. And so, you know, it, it's been obvious to many people that there are serious and systemic problems with the Indigenous procurement process. Um, has PSPC conveyed any of those concerns 
to uh, the client departments that you work with? I, I'm not aware of that. Uh, we're, as I said, they're responsible for the Indigenous Services Canada and the IBD list, and we follow that list. Uh, when we put a contract in place, and our 5% target can only be accounted through that particular, uh, using that particular list. So if a company is not registered on the IBD, then it does not count against our 5% target. So PSPC has never expressed concern about the integrity of the list or the use of shell companies, any of these um, really uh, troubling concerns that have, have been raised over the course of this study? Our responsibility is to actually have discussions through um, uh, Procurement Assistance Canada with Indigenous firms, and we uh, they out you know they provide some information, and then we uh, make sure that they are in contact with Indig in Indigenous Services Canada, and um, th those discussions are happening over there, not with PSPC. I, I guess it just seems unusual because in our um, in our discussions with PSPC about procurement more broadly, um, PSPC has taken a, a very proactive role when it comes to the integrity of government procurement uh, to ensure that fraud isn't taking place, to ensure that there's there are checks and balances along the way. And it seems like with Indigenous procurement, uh, PSPC takes a very hands-off approach and really defers to Indigenous Services Canada uh, when it comes to the registration of businesses. Is that a, a fair characterization? Indigenous Services Canada set the rules, the definitions, and they do uh, own the IBD, and they're the ones that are managing the PSIB program. The uh, Department will Oversight Branch, who is responsible for the integrity of the procurement, um, we have certain clauses with our, within our contracts, and there are certain rules. And we, before putting a contract in place, we had to, we have to go through a departmental oversight branch to validate that a company um, meets the the integrity measures uh, set by our departmental oversight branch. And then we, all, we also those integrity have clauses in our contracts that, you know, the code of conduct, the conflict of interest, mm -hmm. so that if ever something does come about, we have, the rem we have ways to remedy our contracts, either through termination or other means. But those integrity measures do not include the question of whether they are indeed an Indigenous business. Is that correct? I believe so. I, I, I believe so. Okay. Um, so Procurement Assistance Canada is going out there and trying to recruit Indigenous businesses and get them to register with the directory, etc. Um, in British Columbia, can you highlight uh, Procurement Assistance Canada's work in Northwest BC specifically? Uh, we're a bit past our time. If you have a brief uh, response, otherwise we can get to it in the next round. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I would uh, I would say that um, we do um, events um, throughout uh, Canada, and we do focus on BC, and we work very closely with um, uh, regional partners to make sure that um, Indigenous businesses are made aware of the services, and that we can help them be ready to participate actively in in federal procurement. And we have had successes in um, in terms of Indigenous businesses um, participating. Thank you. Thanks very much. We'll now go to uh, Mrs. Block for five minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. And I guess I'm just going to start by reconfirming what I think I've heard in the testimony from our witnesses this morning when it comes to the role of PSPC and the Indigenous set-aside. Um, I guess what I've heard is that the Procurement Department for the Government of Canada, PSPC, has testified that you do not have any oversight of a list of vendors which are required to meet certain criteria to qualify for the Indigenous set aside. And yet we know that, so we know that various departments have the authority to award contracts. And yet it would seem that every time uh, PSPC, and we've seen this over the last couple of years, uh, as we've undertaken uh, various scandals, I would say, within the government of Canada and procurement, that glaring mistakes have been made. 
And that has resulted in the government misspending tens of millions of dollars. Under whose authority are departments given the ability to award contracts directly? That would be the Treasury Board Secretariat who um, outlines the policy. So they're responsible for the directive on uh, managing procurement or on the management of procurement. Okay. Thank you. So after widespread reports of abuse and fraud and the use of shell companies, is PSPC at all curious about getting to the bottom of it? As I said, PSPC is, uh, through uh, Procurement Assistance Canada, continues to have discussions with various Indigenous businesses, uh, listens to what they have to say, and then we'll refer them to the right um, area within Indigenous Services Canada to make sure that they are aware of any issues and they can actually work through some of the... the um, you know, their own policies that are directing us to have 5% target within PSPC for, in, for to, of our procurement to Indigenous um, firms. Right. So you're directed to have a 5% target, and yet you are not responsible to ensure that that target is actually being met by businesses actually going to Indigenous, by, by contracts going to Indigenous businesses. So PSPC is not prepared to step in to deal with the failures of this program and ensure that money meant for Indigenous businesses is actually going to go to Indigenous businesses. Is that what you're telling us here today? What I'm telling you is that Indigenous Services Canada are responsible for the PSIB program. They are responsible for the IBD, and they are working on with Indigenous uh, communities to uh, manage the IBD, possibly make changes to the IBD. But it is um, PSPC must follow the rules set by TBS as well as uh, um, ISC with relations to the 5% target to uh, put some of well, their contracts in place for um, uh, with Indigenous uh, firms. With all due respect, I believe that PSPC does have a responsibility to ensure that uh, taxpayers' money is being spent effectively and efficiently. And if I was uh, seeing reports about this kind of abuse within a program, I would certainly be sounding the alarm and trying to figure out how this could be addressed. I want to get back to the issue of subcontracting. Recently, the Procurement Ombudsman launched a broad review of government procurement, specifically on the practice of bait and switch. Now, this follows on the heels of revelations that your department has allowed companies to engage in the bait and switch with the resources working on their contracts with no repercussions. We talked a little bit about subcontractors earlier in response to some of my colleagues' questions. If you are not monitoring the subcontractors, how can we trust that this program which is supposed to award contracts to Indigenous businesses, is actually working the, may, the way it's meant to. So in our procurements, when we have a prime contractor, we are uh, incorporating certain measures, or uh, the, the, the prime contractor is who we have a contract with, and they have subcontractors, and they are obligated to incorporate the similar type of measures for the subcontractor as they do in their prime contract with the Government of Canada. But we do not manage subcontractors at PSPC. Thank you very and much. And I believe that's a problem. Thanks very much, Mr. Thank Baines. You. We'll go over to you, sir. I'm going to go into the supply manual. The PSPC supply manual states, in support of a piece of client departments may designate that a proportion of subcontracts through open procurement be reserved for Indigenous business or that non-Indigenous suppliers are to be encouraged through the use of incentives. Um, an example is additional evaluation points to hire Indigenous businesses as subcontractors. Can you explain to us what evaluation points are in the, in the uh, contracting process? 
So when we uh, develop a procurement or a, a request for proposal, we will outline uh, how we will evaluate a supplier. And various points are associated with meeting certain criteria. And as long as a company is able to um, outline those criteria and how they will meet them, and we will associate certain points uh, to them meeting those particular criteria. So we have to be fully transparent on how we're going to evaluate the bids so that it is fair, open, and transparent to all bidders. But it seems to me that PSPC is not concerned at all with the integrity of the directory. You're simply staying in your lane and ticking the box and trying to get to 5%, which you know uh, is, is frustrating because the role of PSPC, as I understand it, is to ensure the integrity of government procurement generally across the federal government. And it, it does seem in this case like uh, PSPC is not fulfilling that role. But I'll move to um, the statement earlier in the last round that... Um, yeah, pre, uh, Mr. Backrack, I'm afraid we're, yes. we're past time, but you'll have, uh, you'll have another round. So okay. we can get Thanks, next Mr. round. Uh, Mrs. Take Block, care. please. Thank you, Chair. Just to follow up on my previous round, um, you have kept saying that this program is run by Indigenous services and that you have no oversight of the program. However, PSPC is required to award 5% of contracts per year to Indigenous businesses through this program and has a requirement of that program. 33% um, of subcontractors must be Indigenous. Why then is PSPC not verifying that this subcontracted work is being done by Indigenous businesses. We refer the uh, information to Indigenous Services Canada and they can uh, perform audits to ensure that the companies are um, meeting the requirements and maintain their certification. And then do you receive uh, these audited reports back to confirm that this that you are actually meeting the 5% target? We would uh, receive those reports back by Indigenous Services Canada and incorporate them in our files. So I would just say that by not verifying the work being done by subcontractors, you are virtually admitting that your department is opening this program to fraud. When fraud is committed in government contracting, such as a business posing as an Indigenous business to win a contract, is PSPC the department that is responsible for getting back the money once that company has been exposed as not being Indigenous? There are some contractual terms um, that manage the contract. If we have to... to um if, if something happens and a company who was previous certi previously certified and they actually met the certification but yet no longer meet the certification once we've actually awarded the contract and the contract is still alive, then the contractual clauses in terms and conditions of that contract will, um, will come into play. So you could then get the money back. We, I would not be able to say that we're going to get any money back. It all depends. <laughs> you know, well, they, we, they meet the certification at the time we put the contract in place. If at any time, uh, once we've put the contract in place, a company no longer meets the certification and we terminate at that time, then there's, they have done the work during that time and we owe them the money for the work that they've done. So in relation to the Arrive Scam scandal, PSPC stated that they could get the money back from fraudulent contracting. I am not sure what you mean by a company meeting the certification when you award the contract and then somewhere along the line not meeting the certification along the way if it has been verified that they are an Indigenous business. But my question to you would be, can your department commit to reviewing the contracts awarded through this program and recovering any money spent on contracts awarded to non-Indigenous businesses that were posing as Indigenous? 
I'm unable to answer that question because I, I don't know. Okay, you don't know if you can do that. We heard testimony yesterday about performative reconciliation. If the Liberal government is not recovering money, referring to the RCMP and implementing measures to ensure contracts actually go to First Nation communities, is the Trudeau government guilty of perform, per, performative reconciliation? I'm, I, it's, it's not something I'm able to answer, sorry. That okay, is, thank you very much. That is our time. Mrs. Atwin, please. There's some broad claims uh, being made in some of the, the preambles to the questions being asked by some of my committee members. And, and I'm just wondering if, if they know something more than, than we know um, as far as, you know, which businesses are we talking about as far as those that are non-compliant or like there's, there's evidence that we need to, to uncover. And I, I don't think that we've, we've done that. And so uh, I just I really thank you for what you've been able to, to bring to the table today is, is with regards to, to broad procurement uh, policy and, and what, uh, uh, you know, PSBC is doing on, on their side to really encourage that participation uh, for Indigenous businesses. I, I love hearing about the outreach, the networking, visiting communities, specifically those remote locations. All of that is critically important. Um, and I think it speaks to, to the role that, uh, to the mandate that the government has put forward in, in, in that very important relationship that we have with Indigenous peoples and having economic reconciliation be just a key pillar of that. So uh, I'm just grateful for the discussion today and, and thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Mrs. Atwin. We'll go to uh, Mr. Lawrence. Welcome back to OGO, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. It's a it's a pleasure to be here, um, and I must admit I, I've been I'm not a um, normal member of this committee, and I've been sort of uh, watching this with some awe um, at the the lack of accountability with respect to your department, uh, Ms. Peckett. Um, could you could you tell me if you feel your department is doing a, an adequate job detecting irregularities and even fraud within Indigenous procurement. We put uh, contracts in place and if the, the contracts are for delivery of services or for goods and uh, you know, as long as those services and those goods are delivered, that is, you know, the main concern. The, the, if a company is certified by the Indigenous Services Canada and they've met the certification requirements of Indigenous Services Canada, there is no fraud um, as as you've pointed out, and they are delivering their services and the, or their goods to um, either PSPC or another government department. Can you tell me how many contracts specifically dealing with Indigenous procurement that your department has stopped because of, uh, of unfulfilling contractual obligations that your that your department has put out? I don't have that information. Could you provide that information to our committee? Uh, I, if if we have that information, yes. So you may not have the information as to whether how many contracts have been stopped uh, because of of, uh, of individuals not fulfilling or companies not fulfilling their obligations. That's that's possible. We will provide the information. I, I don't know if we have it specifically stated that way. There are various... Um, anyways, we, we will look into it. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier that you have not hit the 5% target. Uh, that's correct? Uh, correct. Yeah. Thank you. My fault. Yeah. Uh, a little delay there in the translation. But, uh, um, the Where are you at? What percentage are you at right now? So we uh, hit 2.7 percent in 22-23, and we had 3.4 percent, or 143 million, in 23-24. And I do not have the numbers for 24-25, but my understanding is a lot of the efforts through the engagement and increased. Um, uh, participation in different uh, activities in our procurement, we're getting uh, we're we're getting close to our target of the five percent. But I don't have the number yet for this year because the year's not finished. 
my, excuse me, uh, my, and my apologies for over talking there to the translators, but um, have those numbers ever been audited? Uh, I don't know. I would have to validate that. It would mean by validate, like uh, audited. We, well, we the, have identified, so the, the companies that have been certified by IBD would be part of these contracts, and those contracts constitute the numbers we're able to identify towards the 5%. So my, uh, with the, the question I'm looking at is, uh, it was raised by Mr. Backrack, is that uh, these numbers, um, well, any number won't really matter if they're not stood up with a rigor. Uh, and so I'm just wondering if any independent review has been done uh, or even within the department to review to see whether the procurement is occurring in accordance with yourselves as well as uh, Indigenous um, services as well. So the contract itself, we would be managing whether the contractor is delivering the good or service and they're meeting the requirements of the contract. The company would have been certified by the uh, Indigenous Services Canada, be part of the IBD. That certification and the validation oh, through the sorry, IBD allows just, us to actually give a contract to that company and count them against the 5% target. So has any has your department stopped any contracts because of an issue with certification? Not that I'm aware of. We would have to look into that.